Hi guys, it's Angela, and today is going to be a more chatty video. I've been thinking a lot about my rating system and how I rate books, and I talked about this many, many months ago in a tag video, but I wanted to revisit it because I think I need to needed to reframe in my mind how I rate books, what the rating means, and I wanted to get rid of myself using half stars. I, I was using half stars a lot, not because they're bad. I don't hate on anyone who uses half stars, but because I felt like I was using them as a crutch. Like I, I was using them be not because a book was actually that half star rating, but because I didn't want to downgrade it to the rating below it because I had this negative connotation with that rating, um, particularly with three star ratings, which doesn't really make sense. A three star is not a bad book, but I just had this connotation in my head because for years when I used to only read 10 books a year or 20 books a year, like I wouldn't want to be reading a three star read. Why would I do that? Unless it was for like a book club or for school. You know, I only wanted to be reading four or five star reads. But now that I read 70 to 120 books a year, it's very different. Things definitely spread out more and I want to use more of the spectrum. So when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, well, what should I be rating on? Because I do like rating primarily based off of enjoyment. That is why I pleasure read. I think that's important. I'm not an English major. I don't really know how to tell you what has amazing writing or not. I can tell you what I find accessible. I can tell you what I find beautiful. I can tell you when writing is an obstacle for me. But that normally does bleed into the enjoyment factor, right? Like I'm not a book can get five stars and have pretty mediocre sentence structure for me because I am reading to be immersed in a world and to enjoy the experience. Although there are some times when I am reading for a purpose, you know, for a thematic purpose or for learning something. So I was trying to figure out how to balance that and how to do it. And I think I've come up with something that works for me. And I wanted to tell you guys how I'm doing it so that you have an idea of what my star ratings mean when you're watching my wrap-ups or hear me talk in my reviews. So I read books for enjoyment, that's why I pleasure read, but also I do like to take things away from them and I just, I read for engagement, which is the am I enjoying what I'm reading? Am I wanting to pick it up? Am I wanting to read it while I'm reading it? This doesn't mean it has to be a breakneck pace, it just means I'm engaged. I want to be engaged with the material when I have it in my hands and when it's not in my hands because I'm busy with something else. That's something I love about books. I love the feeling of being excited to pick a book up when it's not in my hands. And I love when I am lost to the world and I'm so deep in a book that nothing else matters. And I think the second thing that's really important to me is connection. How connected am I to this material? Normally this bleeds through with characters and themes. Am I connected to these characters? Do I care about what's happening to them? Can I relate to them, etc.? And then the themes, you know, is this theme making me think about something? It's, it's, themes are interesting. Themes can happen in engagement too. But for me, I think it's a lot of time my connectivity with the material. So these are all things I'm thinking about. And obviously engagement has to do with plot. It has to do with why I picked up the work. If I'm picking up a fantasy, that's a very different reason than when I'm picking up a nonfiction. My level of engagement is going to be different for that. I have to also include my expectations and the purpose. And this is, I think, the X factor. So normally I can give something a pretty good around the bend rating at like three, four, five stars or two if it's really disappointing. And then though, maybe I'll be like, man, that was like a three and a half star read. And the thing that I think will tell me if it's a three or a four when I have it at that three and a half is this X factor of did it meet, exceed, or get below my expectations? And what was the purpose of the book for me? Like the purpose of reading a short story collection is very different than the purpose of reading a standalone novel or the first book in a series, right? Like there's just a different mindset I put into each book. And that's, I think, totally okay. You don't pick up two different genres and expect the same things from them. So these were just things that I've been really thinking about. So what does that mean for my ratings? It means no more half stars. Um, I'm going to try and just use full stars unless Goodreads ever gives me a half star option. If Goodreads ever does that, I will use that. But from now on, I need to accept 
that three stars are good books and that I'm allowed to rate them three stars and accept that sometimes I've read a whole book and it wasn't the ideal experience. It had flaws and that's okay. Because I think that's what happens is like I finish a book and I almost always feel like at the end of a book, that was a four star read, which as time goes on is not true. I don't just read only four star reads, which that's what my Google spreadsheet seems to tell me. So what do my star ratings mean now? A one star horrible, potentially harmful. I do not like the representation in this book. I did not like a whole host of things. That could mean writing, character work, plot. A one star is trash. There's probably a rant review on my channel for it. Um, there isn't any one star rant reviews on my channel, but I'm assuming that's what would happen. A two star is close to a one star, but it does have some redeemable qualities or I don't find it harmful to other people. Um, it's just, it didn't hit the marks for me. It definitely was a book that maybe I don't regret reading, but it was not a pleasurable experience from beginning to end for many reasons. I wasn't connecting with it. I wasn't engaged with it. I was frustrated with the themes or lack thereof. That's a two star read. It's a, that's a negative experience. A two star is not, it's okay. A two star is, it's bad. <laughs> and then a three star is, it's good. Now, I think a three star, it has a whole range to it. You have a, it's good to it's, it's good, but it's almost there. And I think that's like kind of what a 3.5 star is sort of thing, or when you're approaching the end. And these are going to be the reads that like, I did have a good time reading them, but they're not going to be all time favorites. They're not necessarily blanket recommendations for everyone. And I saw enough flaws that I just really couldn't give it the four star rating. There were just things that really affected my reading experience, not like objective flaws. Like I said, these are going to be flaws that affected my engagement and connection to the material, which are subjective things. And now four stars are, this is great. This was an awesome read. I had like one or two things that maybe prevented it from being that like amazing five-star read but maybe I can't even articulate it you know sometimes you just know what a five-star read feels like and this wasn't it it was just a really good four and then five star is amazing I loved it if I have a complaint it's a very small one I will be rereading this I will be recommending this to friends I already bought it because it was so awesome that that's a five star read. I feel like it's pretty obvious when I do have a five star experience. So this is still a very subjective rating system. This is still based primarily on my enjoyment and my experience with the books. This isn't me having some spreadsheet on my computer where I rate different aspects from one to 10 and averaging it. This is still based a lot on feel, but I'm now giving myself space to go into the three star range. And I want you guys to know that a three star is not a bad rating for me. A two star and a one star, those are bad. Proceed with caution. But a three star, I will articulate why it's a three star and what makes it a three star for me could make it a five star for you because my rating is based off connecting to the material and that's a subjective experience. So that's it for this one. Let me know how you rate books down in the description below, um, what you find useful or not useful about ratings and reviews. And otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.